that will buffer out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, other than that, we haven't found anything, right? No, no. It's unbelievable, seriously, for like 10,000 bucks. Yeah. This is absolutely a steal. Oh my God. It's even got ventilated seats. Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the new Porsche Cayenne S. But why buy that when you can buy one of these for less than 10% of the price? And it has a V8. This is a 2009 Porsche Cayenne S. It's the cheapest running one we were able to find and was kindly lent to us by the folks at Cars in Lobo here in Ontario. It might be a little rough around the edges, we'll get to that later, but in 2009, a Cayenne S was still a damn near six-figure Porsche emblemed SUV that indicated you had the money to use your expensive face moisturizer for your whole body, if you know what I mean. And now, after not that much time, it can be had for the same price as a fancy lawnmower. So today, we want to find out why would you cough up 150,000 Canadian smackaroos when on the surface, this $10,000 example doesn't seem that different. And most importantly, back then, the Cayenne S had a big old V8. You see, now the new one also has a V8 because Porsche has gone from a twin turbo V6 in the Cayenne S to a V8. For the last seven years, it's been a V6. They've actually gone back to the V8. A twin turbo, 468 horsepower V8. So let's refresh our memories as to why the Cayenne is the sharp end of the sports SUV world. Right away, the best part is that you can get yourself in a really low Porsche-like driving position. The steering wheel comes right at me in a straight line. It's great to drive, and I'm just getting some <laughs> top-notch V8 noises. What a noise. Oh, that sounds good. And it pulls hard. It's not crazy fast, but it is not slow, and the transmission is super snappy. Oh, I love that. Also new for 2024 is a whole wide range of very adjustable suspension options. This one has been optioned with the air suspension, which actually raises and lowers the ride height in sport mode. But it is a two valve system, so there should be a very wide range of adjustability. Unfortunately, I'm not finding it to be that supple in normal mode. I find that the suspension bottoms out a little bit too easily, but in sport, it is obviously quite sharp. And this one has been optioned with the rear wheel steering, which is great in parking lots because it turns the rear wheels the opposite direction of the fronts. But I'm actually finding on the road that it's almost a little bit too aggressive at speed. When I turn the wheel, I tend to oversteer going into a corner. It's a bit weird. But other than that, this is a Cayenne S. It is sharp. It is sports car sharp. It's got crazy sharp steering on turn in. And the whole thing does not feel like it weighs as much as it does. It's very impressive. I can just dive into a corner like this. <laughs> yes. So much performance from a family SUV. This is a family SUV. It's awesome. Actually, that's why WeatherTech has supported this video because apparently they were none too pleased with our uh, use of goat pee and poo to show off the effectiveness of their truck bed liners. So they asked us to try again and use a little bit more of an appropriate context to show off how effective WeatherTech liners can be. Unfortunately, again, well, they've left it to us to figure out how to do that. Why do I have to be Mad Mats? Because you represent the last line of defense before 
kids ruin the back of your $150,000 Cayenne. So this is an example of that. Because like, what's the worst thing that kids can do in the back of a Porsche, you know? Oh, shit. <laughs> well, they could, but they could also play with paints and do arts and crafts. Your kids are going to be the creative type. Just stand still, because I've only got like a minute's training on this. Okay, well, can I, can I turn around first? Yeah, go on. Okay. So where am I going, just for the back? Yeah, like, like the mat, hit the mat, that's what we're testing. Yeah, yeah. Does this drop off? How powerful is it? It's pretty, oh! Ooh. The mats! <laughs> what is, what, why? I'm sorry. How, look how big they are! Seriously! I'm sorry, this is, you know, it's complicated. Oh. Just like, I don't trust you from the back now. Okay, the, the front, just go, go higher, okay? Okay, okay, higher, higher. Ah! I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, you, you can't put a price on friendship and the power of a Canadian apology. Um, I'll, I'll sort that out in a bit. What you can put a price on is a 145,000 kilometered 2009 Cayenne S. Because for 10 grand Canadian, this thing's a steal. 385 horsepower, all wheel drive as standard, naturally aspirated V8. This is back when, if it didn't have a turbo in the name, it didn't have a turbo in the engine bay. I mean, you're looking at 0 to 60 in just over six seconds. Not rapid, but I did not expect it to sound that good. I feel like when I've had these go past me in traffic, I haven't been aware of the fact that the exhaust is producing those noises. And 2009 is kind of an interesting year for the Cayenne S because it's the end of the first generation. So they had years to iron out the kinks and the issues. So famously, this is one of the most reliable. 2008 onwards is also where Porsche debuted on the Cayenne, Porsche Dynamic chassis control which this one doesn't have because it didn't get optioned with it it was quite an expensive option but had you got it you would have adaptive air suspension and active anti-roll bars this doesn't have that but somehow it still handles it's almost 5,000 pound mass pretty bloody well like you can absolutely <laughs> feel the mass when you do that in a way that you definitely cannot in a modern Cayenne. And it has a longer steering ratio than I'm used to. It has more weight in the steering when it weights up. It's pretty loose on center though. And you can still feel a surprising amount in the road, which has been ironed out because the Cayenne has graduated from this sort of half off-roader sporty thing to just sporty and luxury. Now you could get a manual one of these if you went for the base V6 or if you sprung for the GTS. But this one, the Cayenne S, only got the Tiptronic, which you can control using these little buttons on the steering wheel. And let's just say it's no Doppelgeflügelgetriebe, which is PDK, if you want to butcher an entire language. Because, yeah, it's a little bit slow, and it's not, you know, as a six-speed automatic, it's, it's easier to get on with if you just keep your hands on the steering wheel and let it do its thing. But manual operation of the transmission aside, for 10 grand, it just drove like so much car for the money. So just before we stopped to chat about the visual differences between the two, Thomas and I gave each other's cars a go for a bit of perspective. Listen, <laughs> that is actually quite great to drive. Isn't it? Yeah. I, when, when would an old versus new? Never be fascinating. I don't, it just, like, it's I really, always fun. I, you know, I don't want to be a hater, but I thought with the Cayenne, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's still so awesome to try. Ten grand for this. For the fog headlight? Well, the whole car. These maybe, are free. Yeah, maybe back then they were extra. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's a few options on these things. Okay, I, I, first of all, I'd, I'd want to reiterate one more time. I cannot believe how much you're getting for ten grand. It drives fantastically. Yeah, don't don't touch this. It's been hurt before. Yeah, this has been repainted, hasn't it? <laughs> it <does Yeah>. it. <laughs> Slightly different color. Different, going on. different sheen. Um, it's different sheen. It doesn't quite match the marine blue. Which I covers. see your marine blue, and I'll raise you Algarve blue. This looks like decor from a dealer, Porsche dealership. 
Well, yeah, that's what they're, they're selling you the whole experience. It's yes, just... but look at those! Light, te <laughs> light technology, and look on the, on the rear. Someone you know, cracked an egg and put it here. You could eat dinner off the front and the rear, then the tail lights. Whereas the tail lights are these, and when these are on, they're just like little lasers. Well, the, these are the Matrix headlights. So these are the ones that like will cut out the car as you're, uh, as you're driving against it, and only they... I'm explaining this very badly. So you drive... It cuts out the car. Don't hurt the people. Yeah, it's yeah. really advanced. This anyway, is a beautiful piece of kit. If you took these headlights, I want yeah. to say that, and you put them on this front end, yeah. all of a sudden, this wouldn't look as horrendous as it does. No, so... It's horrible. So the Cayenne, what were they thinking? The Cayenne has a bad reputation. For yeah, when, for the, a the, reason. The, look at it. The first generation. So this is the facelift. Yeah. But the, the first one is when it has that very strange grill where it's weirdly simple. Yeah. This is it's not bad. Simple. simple. I could do That's without the, right the infinity word. style chrome everywhere. The chrome is so bad. What were they thinking in this era? What was the what was the idea with like let's just throw chrome at it? You know what's funny is that it's like this matte chrome and on the rear tail step, I think it used to be chrome, but it's worn off and it's just white. Do you now. do you want to pick apart the things that are going on with this quickly? Yeah, I would like yeah, to. Yeah, because the plasti dipped uh, wheels are a real starter. Look at that. Yeah, well, the, the, a six year old did those. And was, <laughs> this is a this is a repainted panel. That's We've repainted got panel. headlights that are foggy. There's some rust right there. I saw that. Oh, the rust only begins there. Right. Uh, we have some. Uh, well, there's this crack here on the rear three quarter. That's, yeah, that's a hit for sure. I've seen a knock yet. Yeah. There's some rust spots on the back here. That panel doesn't line up either. This gap from this direction no, is, no, no. is so, quite a lot something larger happened, than Something me. happened, and yeah, there's a bit of rust there. Um, we'll look at the interior in a second. Let's not do it. 10 grand. Yeah, yeah I, honestly, I, whatever, I can't complain. You can it, buy four of these for the options on this. <laughs> So if you think they look similar, that does that mean... not an exaggeration on, at all. Controversial. If you think these look similar, does that mean you think that the new Cayenne is ugly? No, no, because I said the headlights are what... Literally all they had to do was change the shape of the headlight. And That's it, it? I guarantee there was a designer at some point who was going... He's, he accidentally slipped and, and the headlight changed shape and he went... Oh, <laughs> here you have a car that looks fantastic. Well, this is the new one. This is the updated one, right? So it's got like a, a new hood and oh, some different it? styling and stuff, right? But otherwise... The new Cayenne, by new I mean compared to this one, yeah, is yeah. a good looking SUV now. I don't have any issues with this whatsoever. We, we have always liked the Cayenne. Well, since we tried, what was the first one we tried? 2019, 2018? Yeah, it was, it was great to drive and we realized, and we're like, I think the only two journalists in the world that say this, the Macan is not the answer. The Cayenne is the way to do it. There we go. Because the Macan... Well, the, that, in, in, you mean it's class, because this is a price point above. No, 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 I know, but like if you're going to do a Porsche SUV, right. I, would, I would get a cheaper Cayenne than a higher-end Macan. Yeah, we, right? we've said that this car, the Cayenne more so than the Macan is the one that sort of outperformances its size and shape. The Macan... Yes, just, the Macan just feels yeah. like a compromised and car. And we've driven the turbo right. and it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you have a Macan, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, I, just, I, feel, I feel like I fit in right now because I have a V8 now. Okay? It just yeah, it's a V8. It gets a V8. It it's gets nice, a V8. right? And a particularly nice interior. Um, which one would you want to talk about first, the old or the new? I've got some funky Ooh. stuff going on in there. There is some funky stuff. Let's, let's start with this one because let's save that for the end. Okay. Okay. Dude, it's soft close. Oh, why, you, I, why did I even know that? You've been living with this and you don't even know that. You smell that? That's the, that's the $530 air refreshening option. Oh no. Yeah. That's a lot. And enjoy sitting in a leather package that costs half as much as your entire car. I will say it is very nice in here. Yeah, the others are obviously, in, here's the problem is that you sit in this and you go, I couldn't for the price of this entire car, I couldn't possibly downgrade from here. That would be insane. No. So they know they've got you. They got you. Like you're spending $4,700 Canadian on a leather package. But anyway, this is the new interior. What do you think? I like it. Pretty good, I right? Like it. 911 we steering got, wheel. We got lots of screens. We got, well, we've gone to a full digital gauge cluster now. Yep. But it still allows me the and classic five gauges. Like it, but since it's digital, they've been able to just kind of cram them in a little bit, so they all actually fit within the confines. Okay. Of the if that's the case, explain the Taycan, which still hides. <laughs> it still does it. To, well, they've they figured it they out. They finally, finally figured one. it out. You I can, I can enough. see absolutely everything yes. through there, and then you can change it, right? So yeah, you, you can spin that little wheel, and it goes through like okay. five different options, all the way down so to like a full a map, essentially. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And night vision. And night vision. Yeah. And simple. And simple. And calm. To keep you calm. I like it. No, this is all. This is all new. That screen's not on there. No, it is on because I. It is pol pol polarized. 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 It's 
I'm not sure why it was so hard for me to say that right there. Are you okay? Polar, polar, polarized. Wait, yes. So I, oh, wow. Okay. So you can see it when you come over here. Doesn't make any sense. We have to be so close for us to both watch this. <laughs> Get over there. Yeah. Yeah, there's a video option so I can actually watch like Netflix and stuff. Okay. Right? And well, can I watch it here? You, you can if we're parked. Okay. Right? But yeah, like it's called Screen Hits TV. It's like some third party oh, like nice. app that you have to then use to sign in. It cheapens it that a little sounds bit. like Saturday morning TV as well. The problem is, is that it's so pol polarized. Why is that word so? Lots of that, syllables. <laughs> that, I, <laughs> that I can't really ever fully see it. So there's actually no position that I exist in where the whole screen isn't look like a part of it's darkening. Uh, so like if I move this way, dark, that, that side's gone. If I move this much, that side's gone. So even in the center, it's just, it's way too... That's Porsche precision. This is that's that's so polarized. polarized. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, this has changed here. We've got this, this stubby uh, shifter now. Yeah, they so move the shifter from here to there. So now this is clean. Well, so, yeah. so you can... It's not clean. Dirty it with fingerprints. it's got fingerprints on it. It's nice though. This whole thing is a panel and there's a nice click to it. And since this is like the premium plus whatever package, which is like $10,000 with yeah. the cooled seats. And if you didn't get that package, that would just be a cooled seat that you can't click. Is it slightly grayed out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is so offensive. They, they so still found offensive. a way. When we get in the old one, I'll show you how they used to hide <laughs> yeah. switches that didn't have things. Seats are comfortable, the seats in the rear are comfortable. Even yep. Harrison, who's six foot six, fits with head and knee room to spare. Yeah, that's good. And it's even, yeah, got Porsche crest. How much are these? How much is the crest? Is that, it's, oh, is it an, oh, I'll pull up the spec sheet. I don't even know. It probably <laughs> is an option though, you're right. There's like 15 pages of it. So give me a second here. I get soft closed door. That's, that's $820 for the privilege of that. Oh, this is important. Yeah, it does have the exterior mirror, lower trim, and base in exterior color. So they've charged you to paint the lower part of the trim the same color as the body for $750. Right, otherwise it's just black. Black like plasticky. Well, whatever it is, it must be completely unacceptable because it's been optioned. Yeah. Um, no, no, if I, you're spending 150 grand. I don't, see, I don't see the logo in the headrest. I could be wrong though. So there you go, that's free. Right. Yeah. There's also preparation for the Porsche dash cam, front and rear, just the preparation. How much is that? $150. It's ready to go though. We, we don't have the dash cam, but it's prepped. Anyway. Very, um, very, very nice in here. No, of course it's very nice. Like everything is top notch. Everything's so well built. Everything is so solid. Nice wireless charger where you can heat up, heat up your phone. Actually, I would like to inform you. This is groundbreaking stuff really. That is a cooled phone charger. What do you mean? Well, you know how all, all they ever do is just heat up your phone and not charge them. Yeah, there was a news article recently that the new BMWs are boiling, boiling the, the iPhone, iPhone 15. 15. Yeah. yeah, this actually has, it, it routes cold air at all times into that little cubby to keep your phone cool. Oh. Isn't that intelligent? Does it work? No. No. Yeah, well, my, phone, my phone was still hot and it didn't charge it very well, but probably better than the alternative is my guess. Well, the old one has some uh, hidden cooling technology as well. Does it now? Yeah. Oh, feels good. No, no soft clothes. No, so we just slam it like yeah, a... Yeah, back when men were men. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't sell that well, did I? No, anyway. I'm not the guy to do that. This is, uh, well, it's not a good looking interior, m primarily because of the steering wheel, I think. Like, what were they thinking? Yeah, it looks a bit... Like what, but like, what is the design? It, it kind of looks like a flayed... <laughs> there's buttons and then like there's these ridges here that match these buttons. It's just a physically ugly steering wheel. Yes. Anyway, the rest of the interior is also ugly. No, it's, you know what? It's not that bad actually. It's sturdy. It is actually um, very sturdy. Like, I got a hardly... glow in the dark shifter here. <laughs> so I have a feeling that that used to be the same chrome as this chrome it did. here. Yeah, yeah. It it's just a, worn off used completely. to have a smooth chrome thing. Yeah. Um, but we were talking about cooling. Yeah. Cooled glove box. Nice. Yeah. Oh. You can put your chocolate bars in there. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. even think about what you that's put That's what in that's there. for. I was what gonna it? put my iPhone in there, like, they wouldn't have thought of that. Well they did think of that, because there's actually a spot for an iPhone here, but... iPod. That's the attachment for it. Um, yeah. So it gives you... <laughs> what is that? It's old, it's an old style. It is really old style, that's funny. Uh, there's, there's audio files watching this going on. Like, actually, the fidelity of that time. Yes, of course. Left right. it behind. This is, you know, it's comfy though. Like, I got a lot of space. 
I got a good driving position, which that also has, right? Yeah. I have five gauges that don't move at all. Is this for change? Just a little bit. The, That's, the, so the, yeah, this would normally be where the uh, Porsche Dynamic chassis control switch would be. Oh. And that debuted on this. It was a big deal. Right. The active anti-roll bars. Oh right, and, that uh, stuff. This doesn't have that. Well, it, it's nice of them to like say, okay, well they didn't option this, so we'll give them something in its place so that they don't feel like they've missed out on something. That is not what Porsche does anymore. No. They remind you for the duration of your ownership of the car that you didn't get all of the options, just most of the options. We've got five choice uh, heated seats. We've got a working sunroof. Yep. We have st stuff. There's not much more than that. 10 grand. 10 grand doesn't matter. Bose sound <laughs> system. Doesn't matter. All, by the way, options that were, well, not all, but options were just as expensive back then. Yeah, and they only had to kill one elephant for the interior. Ellie. <laughs> it does, uh, yeah, it does feel like it's been stolen from an animatronic Jurassic Park model. <laughs> yeah, very much, yeah. But it feels nice. This was back when the, they sort of had to be a bit rugged. It has the low range, it has the off-road stuff, the, the diff lock. Like, That's pretty crazy. It's got all the stuff, but, but, the, but then they realized that no one was off-roading them. No. And Obviously. Then, then it became the mall crawler that it's become. Yeah. But it's a very nice mall crawler. For 10 grand, I, I, I honestly, there's nothing that I can possibly say about this. No. Like, it's currently running, driving, not overheating, and it goes into all the gears. That's 10 grand right there. Like, and, like nothing else actually matters in yeah, the Yeah, also comfortable. Also six foot six Harrison fits in the back. Does it have a power lift? It does have a power trunk. Would you look at that? Ten grand. Ten. Ten grand. Ten. Ten grand. Ten thousand measly dollars. Porsche. <laughs> okay, what do you want? It was never going to be perfect for that price, but maybe that's part of its charm. I'd be lying if, as a team, we didn't almost talk ourselves into buying it as a crew car, because it really did run and drive very well for the price. But at the very least, the old Cayenne S demonstrated that Porsche has always known how to make a sporty SUV. However, Cayennes continue to be, perhaps, a bit too clinical. Even the absurdly impressive Turbo GT. Something like an F-Pace SVR is far more exciting and better bang for your buck, and an X5 M60i delivers performance with a slightly more plush interior experience. But if you want precision above all things, there's no doubt that the Cayenne S is, and as it turns out has always been, a solid choice for a sporty SUV. And once again, a huge thank you to WeatherTech for making this video possible, and hopefully being pleased with it this time. Because not only did Thomas prove that he would take a bullet for them, he proved it over and over And over again, one of us had a terrible time. And now the two fancy Porsche SUVs get to stay fancy because after a quick hose off, they've appropriated Mad Max's defenses and are now ready for anything. And so can you be if you click the WeatherTech link in the description to find liners for your vehicle. Thanks for watching. Okay, wait, Ow. Are you, Hand it you over. Can, I'm gonna go over to this side. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll swing it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get, do a swing. It has to be. I want. I want. You know, there's some special areas that I want covered. If I'm being honest. <laughs> Did you get it? Nice. Good work, guys. That's it. Oh no! It ripped. There you go. Call me Mad Max. <laughs> 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 oh. All right. Ready? Ready to review a Cayenne. <laughs>